Good morning, morning everyone. everyone. How many of us were here last year? Hmm. Those who weren't here really missed, but I know you'll make it up this year. Before I go into my speech, I would like to um, appreciate the organizers of this program. They've really, really done a good job. Their publicity is one out of a million. I'm always excited whenever I'm invited to events like this. Events that promote the prospects of women. Events that tell the female gender that there's no limits to how far they can go. Do you know that there are some factors, some factors that determine what people become in life? It can be your parents, it can be your family, it can be your environment, it can be your friends, your marriage, yourself, your cultural background, and so on. Out of all these factors, which of them do you think is the greatest determinant? Can anyone answer this question? Yourself. I'm happy many of us know the answer, yourself. Let me give some examples. Let's say you are from a cultural background that believes that a female child should not be educated beyond a certain level and be married off because marriage is the highest level she can aspire to. If you accept such a culture, you have confined and consigned yourself to the kitchen. Or you are from a back family background that is financially humble, that is poor background, and all your life, you've never seen anybody that is financially comfortable. For that reason, you have accepted that as a fate of your family, and you lose hope. You have limited yourself. But if another person in the same situation refuses to accept that limitation and believes that he can rise above that situation and even change the story of his family, then the person has taken the first step to success. So for this speech of mine today, I have titled it Taking Advantage of Your Negative Background to Achieve a Positive Future. If you want to be successful in life, like the meaning of success is achievement of planned goals. That means to achieve success, you must have goals. And to achieve your goal, you must plan. It is not every time that things work out the way you want it. Everybody born into this world, you know, the, what everyone wants is to have smooth journey, but it's not always the way. I remember when my father um, retired as a secondary school principal. He was paid his gratuity. And he had a plan of creating a depot for palm oil distribution. Everybody was happy in the family. My mother then was a primary school head teacher. When the gratuity was paid, as we were planning to go into the palm oil business, my father's elder brother fell ill. And the entire gratuity was diverted to his treatment. And that was how the idea of palm oil business died. So now a retiree, my mother, a primary school head teacher, any limited income, pension for my father wasn't coming regularly. Things became so tough to the point that the only 504 car that the family had was painted into a taxi in order to generate more income. And we gave it to a taxi driver. It would drive from Monday to Saturday. And the vehicle was only available for the family's use on Sundays when we go to church. So I sat down. I looked at it. I, I was there when we had the good fortune, when my father was, still in a, um, was not yet retired, when his gratuity was paid, 
when our only car was painted to taxi, I looked back and said, one thing I didn't allow is to allow that situation to weaken my spirit. I told myself, I looked at my parents, I said, I must be successful in life. I must change the story of these parents. And at that point, I was determined and took it up and said, Jumoke, you know what? You must be successful. And the first demonstration of my determination was in the choice of secondary school subjects that I, I chose, upper, upper secondary school subjects, you know, you have to, your, compo your choice of subjects will determine what you, um, you study in the university. I sat down and chose my subject in such a way that I will have university courses option. So I chose them in such a way that I could be a pure scientist, a social scientist, or a, an, or, uh, a, a graduate of art. Because I didn't want to leave any room for failure. So in a bid to study a, so a course that would give me um, joy in the university, I searched for a course that I have passion for, and I thought of civil engineering. I thought of computer engineering. My parents were like, those are male-dominated courses. When they said that, I was so happy because I wanted to prove to everyone that there's no course created for male alone or female alone. Everybody can study any course. So I went ahead, the search still continued until I stumbled on applied geophysics. And when I got to know that this course is one that will allow you to stand on the surface of the earth and know what is happening in the subsurface, and you know where oil is, you tell people to go there and they go there, they find it. And that was how I settled for applied geophysics. Nobody understood the course I wanted to study. I explained to my parents they didn't understand. But one thing I appreciate my parents for was that they didn't tamper with my choice of course. I had passion for it. I had looked at the course content and I loved it. And they told me, go ahead, if it was what you loved to do. I got to the university, 300 level. There were some abstract courses that we took. At some point, I felt like, ha, Jumoke, what are you doing here? But because I had passion for it, I went into that course myself. I said, if others had done this course and they came out successful, why can't you? So I put him on effort and I came out with 2-1. So what I'm saying in excess is that, what I'm saying is that, parents, I'm talking to you here. Don't tamper with whatever your children want to do. Don't impose on your children your failed ambition. Some of you wanted to be medical doctors. For one reason or the other, you couldn't achieve it. And you want to force it on your child. What if your child wants to study marketing? What if your child wants to study law? At the end of the day, you would have forced your child to study what the child does not love. How do you want your child to be fulfilled in life? Don't you know that our self-confidence will be affected? Our self-esteem will be affected doing what she's not cut out to do. So please, if you, for one reason or the other, you couldn't achieve your ambition, don't force it on your child. Allow them to pick what they want to study and with that you can mold them or you can advise them and help them to succeed. I talked about studying applied geophysics. So when I went in to study about applied geophysics, in order not to leave room for failure, what I did when I got to the university while studying, any time we were on holidays, instead of going to a friend's house, gisting and all that, I enrolled into a fashion institute to learn how to make sew dresses. I learned how to sew in two different places before I left the university. And why did I do that? You know, I said I was determined to be successful and change the story of my parents. So everything possible I needed to do, I did. I did that because, yes, I love geophysics. I have passion for it. What if I graduated and there was no job? I must have a backup. 
And that was the reason I learned how to sew. And that was there. That same pattern now runs in my family. My first son is studying chemical engineering, he's also coding. My daughter is studying law. She's a, she's a certified sh chef. My last child that is just going into the university, she is a um, professional photographer. So you must think of that. Education is very good. No matter what business you go into, the education will help you to, to pro um, progress. So please, look at yourself. What do you have passion for? Don't be ashamed of your passion. Work on it and develop it. To be successful in life, there are some success habits that you must cultivate. One of them is you have to have self-confidence. Self-confidence is very, very important because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody will believe in you. If you don't believe in yourself, the only thing you see in yourself is, are your weaknesses. You will not see your strengths. Some of you, you feel intimidated, females. When you're walking, you feel intimidated by the, um, your male counterpart or your bosses. And for that reason, you resign. I feel very sad when I see ladies resign because their male counterparts are, are dealing with them, frustrating them. That shouldn't affect you. That should make you stronger. That should give you that urge to do more, to prove them wrong. I encountered such in the course of my career. But I was too focused to even see their distractions. And at the end of the day, victory and elevation was the result. So please, be yourself. Don't care about what people say. Don't care about, especially when you are progressing. One thing you should know that is that people won't talk about you if you are failing. If you are progressing, that's when they will gossip about you. So when you are making progress, people will gossip about you. When they are gossiping, just be focused and you'll get your, this, um, your end point. And maintain good relationship. You don't know who will help you tomorrow. This affects everybody. Ourselves, the way you treat them at home. You don't know what help that person will be tomorrow. It will be the one that will lead you to your place of destiny. Look at, at what place your subordinates your bosses maintain good relationship. You don't, for one reason or the other, you were brought to that person for a purpose. Anytime you meet anyone, don't think of you know, creating a thread with a person, just maintain good relationship because tomorrow the person may be of help to you or even be of help to your children. Good relationship is very important. I joined Sahara um, about nine years ago as exploration manager. I was the first female explorer, you know, I'm still the first female uh, exploration manager. I came in, designed the wells, like you heard from my um, the citation. I designed the well, drilled the wells with my, my, my team, and later I was elevated to the position of general manager exploration. There's a well we drilled. This well, I know of someone who sent me a disclaimer saying that this trajectory, this you know, pattern of drilling, has never happened on shore Nigeria, that it was going to fail. I told him that I would take responsibility. I designed that well. We drilled it, and it was a success. And it is the first of its kind in this industry. That well was designed by a female. So if a female could do that, who says you can't do it? And we went ahead and drilled our wells, and delivered the first three wells ever for Sahara Energy. And today, we can boast of producing from those wells and some others. We have, we have about 12,000 barrels we are producing, from, from not from all the wells, and we are ramping up production as we speak. So I became the first general manager exploration, first MD, um, female MD for, for Sahara Energy, and we've delivered today. Nigeria, all these are done by a female. So why will you say that a profession or a, 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 you know, a, a field is only for men? It is male dominated. We are all, you know, we are interviewed on the same day. The company who interviewed you has a target and he wants you to deliver. 
He will not say because you are a female. He will leave some part of the responsibility aside. You have to demonstrate if you want to progress. You have to be hardworking, and you must stop saying that, eh, you know, we are in the same department, you are a man, you go and do it, I'm a woman. You cannot progress. So please have that behind your mind. I became the MD when oil price dropped from 100 plus to $30 per uh, barrel where most companies were laying off people, and some even closing down. And I was mandated to keep the company alive. During that period, we reduced our opre um, the OPEX by 52%, and we never laid anybody off. How we, kept, how we did it without laying anybody off is a story for another day, but it was achieved. So, we are all here today. I know, do we have students here? If you are here, raise up your hands, let me see you. And we still have singles amongst us here. Let me give you a secret. That really worked for me. Because when I give my talk, I always want to share my own life experience. I know it will bless one or two people. Before I accepted my husband's proposal, because I had a, you know, I had a plan, and I didn't want anything to stop my plan, achieving what I have you know, laid down. I know God is the one that leads us, but I have a plan to be successful. So when he asked me if I would marry him, my question to him before accepting the proposal was, do you want a house, house, a full-time housewife or a career lady? He said a career lady. I asked him the reason. He said, because it will give you your, uh, the lady a self-esteem. I said, okay, that with some other reasons, I accept your proposal. And that is one of the secrets of my success to date. My husband has always supported me. I travel a lot. I do, I, I travel a lot. I, even when my children were young, you know, the man is there because it was an agreement. So if you want to develop your career and you just go into marriage without discussing with your partner and agreeing from the beginning, you may have a problem. If the home front is not peaceful, there may be a problem. So everything must be sorted out. You must be hardworking. You must be hardworking. If you want to progress in life, you must be hardworking. To the business, those into business, please ensure that quality is very important. If you don't put quality, you know, put details into what you do, then you may have a problem. Especially the business, those sewing um, dresses, those into air making. If your job is not good, people won't see what you did out there and ask the person who has the dress on to give the phone number. You won't get more patronage. So put that into consideration. Let's now look at people working who are employed and those who are not employed. I feel very sad when I see fresh graduates, those who have graduated for many years, sitting at home in the, in the, in the um, searching for job, for white collar job. Who says you are meant to be an employee? It's not everybody that is cut out to be an employee, and it's not everybody that will be an employer. I have a cousin. He tried to travel out for his master's degree. And he tried, I think he was denied visa, UK visa, for four times. At the end of the day, he got frustrated. Then one day, he just walked around the streets where he lived and was searching for opportunities. So he discovered that sachet water, what we call pure water, was sold in that street, was brought from another, another um, area, far from that, the area where he lived. Then he went to his father and said, his father should give him the money that he had set aside for his master's abroad to enable him to start pure water business. Today, he has many trucks. He's not only producing sachet water. He produces water in bottles and into the dispenser bottles. And he has traveled to many countries in the world with his family on vacation. He has not... So, the so-called master, masters, he never went abroad to study it. And he goes, nobody has ever denied him visa after he started his business. So why don't you look around you? Who says you must all work in an oil company? Who says you must all work in a bank? Who says you can't use your... There are many of you who are good cooks. 
Can't you think of using your mother's kitchen to start cooking and taking food to schools or, 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 or offices? You start from there. And you, who knows? You can become the tantalizers of tomorrow. Some people lose their jobs. They think that's the end of the world for them. Why don't you think that it could be a blessing in disguise? A door cannot close if another one is not open. But if you don't keep your mind open, you will not be able to reason. Such a mindset will allow you to reason and be able to see opportunities around you. Why don't you, when you're not employed, I'm talking to the graduates that are not working, why don't you try to volunteer? Just go to companies and say, please, can you allow me to come in? I don't need your money. All you need is the experience. Once you have the experience, it will put food on your table. I experienced this. Like I told you, when I talk, I don't talk theories. I talk from my own personal experience. I went to a man who works in the oil industry. He's one of my mentors today. He started his own small business. I walked into his office. I said, I did an interview with one of the uh, multinationals. And I was expecting my letter. They told me I was successful. But the person to sign my letter traveled up to outside the country for on vacation. I said, let me come to your office and start gathering experience pending when that letter will come. He allowed me because I said no pay. So I would leave my house 5 a.m. in the morning, go to his house because he was using his boy's quarter as the office. He had only two staff. I was number three. So one of his pioneer staffs. He will, uh, the, ourselves, the domestic staff will give me the key to the office, to the boys' quarter around 6 a.m. I will open, start working, cleaning the old place and all that. And at the end of the month, he paid me. He said that there were some skills I brought that they didn't have within the system. And that was how he employed me. Do you know that what has made me today in this oil and gas industry that has helped me to excel to the point I am today Majority of them I got from that company. So what if I had sat at home doing nothing, just waiting till that letter, that letter never came, but I never thought of it again. So God led me to that place to gain the experience that will help me become what I, I am today. Experience is something that can never be taken from you. Don't care how the experience comes. Don't think about the money. Money is good but it's still secondary, secondary in the scheme of things. So please, if you can get a place you can go to and still have the, um, the, the few naira to take you to the place, go and gather the experience and it will go a long way. So I will be rounding up now. In conclusion, you can now see that that timid lady, the lady that was timid because then my siblings, my entire siblings were outspoken. I was timid to the point that sometimes when I'm walking, I'm always walking. Like, it was that bad. It was really bad. But that same lady became exploration manager, is the first vice president of the largest technical association in West Africa. In 40, in 40 years of his existence, it wasn't that I, just, I was just put on that seat. I contested with three, two other long-standing people in the industry, and I became the first female vice president. So one, one thing you need to do, just be determined. Know what you want. Once you are determined, believe in yourself. If there's anything you need to do, that will take you there. I'm not saying doing, do it illegally, do things that are legal. Don't care about the person that will put you through. If it's even somebody younger than you, go to the person to teach you. If it teaches you, they will not put it on your forehead that so-so person was the one that helped you. Don't be proud. Many women have um, succeeded in their, in their various um, areas of um, they have various careers. Some of them are Ibuku and Woshika. Some of them are the women sitting here today that will be speaking to you. As you have there, you can see all the people speaking, the women speaking here today. You have our sister, you have everyone, even this woman that had to sacrifice herself to eradicate um, the spread of Ebola. 
look at everyone there. They have succeeded. And if these women have succeeded in their various careers, you can even do more than they've done. So before I leave here today, I'm going to leave you with this quote by Roy T. Bennett. It says, believe in yourself. What did he say? Believe in yourself. You are braver than you think, more talented than you know, and capable of more than you imagine. So today, as you are stepping out of this room, you must be determined and say to yourself, mention your name and say, I can do more. Come, come what may, I must succeed. I am a woman created by God. I have talents given to me my, by God. I am unique in my own way. And whatever I do, I must be successful in it. But ensure that you hold on to that and focus on your goal. But one thing you must not do is you must not procrastinate. Because that's another problem many people have. Please, when you have a goal, plan and follow your plan. And never you um, do things outside what your, um, your, your success habit has, has, um, has laid down for you. Please ensure you, you, you put in your effort in whatever you do and you will surely succeed. So go out there and do more. God bless you.